ancient Ireland was said by some to have been plagued by a particularly large and fierce breed of wolf, and men would sometimes go to war with them, or call them to war alongside heroes and champions. They would even make so bold as to attack villages and towns, and a great pack of them attacked one such town in Ireland in the year 1650. To battle these fierce wolves of great cunning and speed were bred the Irish Wolfhounds, a mighty breed of dog which can grow almost to the height of a man's shoulders. But older stories yet claim that Wolfhounds were not bred to hunt wolves at all, but a darker sort of beast which was part wolf and part man. An ancient book written by Irish monks recounted the spoken histories of druids and bards who remembered the lines of ancient kings and spoke of a prince called Laganek Felad, whose brother Fyrdok was the first king of Ossery. His children and all the people of his tribe could change themselves into woven form and raid the herds and homes of their enemies, going a wolfing as it was known. They devoured cattle and people with equal lust. It is for this reason that the wolf's head became the banner of Ossery of old. And when an Ossorian lived as a wolf, their human body lay still and cold at home as if it were dead. Strict orders were given to friends not to touch or move the human body because when the returning spirit could not find it, then the person was doomed to remain in woven form for the rest of their life. An even older legend recounts how three werewolf women came forth from a cave once a year during the harvest feast to slaughter sheep and other livestock and who were finally lured to their doom by music and then massacred. So seriously were these stories taken that they even came to the attention of the Vatican and received the seal of Pope Urban III, perhaps the first ever tale of a werewolf recorded in Christianity. In 1182, a man by the name of Gerald of Wales, the royal clerk to the English king, was making his way from the top of the country down through the south. As he was exploring the country and writing it all down in his book, Topographia Hibernica. He stopped to rest for one night, and after darkness had wrapped itself about the world and the fire was burning, what should he hear but a gruff, trothy voice echoing out of the darkness, asking him to walk into the forest. He would not walk into the forest, as he was absolutely terrified. But after he calmed down a bit, he convinced the person speaking out in the forest to step forward into the light and be seen and what should emerge but a mighty wolf of yellow fang and grey fur. This wolf told Gerald that he was an accursed son of the tribe of Ossery, who had been damned to send forth two of their number every seven years in the form of a wolf by Saint Natalus of Kilkenny. As wolves, they would stay and live for seven years until they returned home to be replaced by another couple. Gerald of Wales was also a priest, and the wolf who didn't give his name told Gerald that his wife had been wounded by hunters and was in her deathbed a few miles away, and since they were both Catholics, they'd like if he'd come and hear her last confession. And so he went, after some little persuasion, to a nearby cave and found a she-wolf, who spoke in turn, and gave her confession and received the last rites before passing away. And when she did, she turned back into an old woman, to the astonishment of Gerald. Gerald then wrote to his bishop and then to the Pope. Gerald reflected on the words of Saint Augustine, who also spoke of shapeshifters. He wrote, We agree then with Augustine that neither demons nor wicked men can either create or really change their natures, but those whom God has created can, to outward appearance, by his permission, become transformed, so that they appear to be what they are not, the senses of men being deceived and laid asleep by a strange illusion, so that things are not seen as they really exist, but are strongly drawn by the power of some phantom or magical incantation to rest their eyes on unreal and fictitious forms. This story is intriguing in that it does not paint these creatures as evil or as instruments of the devil but rather as victims with souls and redeemable, God-fearing beings that could still retain their humanity in the face of their condition, a rarity in a time when such creatures were the stuff of nightmares. 
The werewolves of Ossory would hold a prominent place in Irish folklore for centuries and are still spoken of today, but it is unclear just from where such stories sprang or what truth any of it ever had. Most theories today point to these beings just being misrepresentations and romanticised accounts of the warriors of the era, who would appear looking barbaric and draped in wolf skins, while others declare that this was just an evolution of the common connection made between warriors and wolves. Whatever the case may be, these creatures were much spoken of in their time, and hold a strong place in the folklore and tales of old Ireland. Creatures prowling out past the periphery of our understanding and inhabiting a realm somewhere between reality, fantasy and legend.